Ladies and gentlemen, we're now into hour number two. I am your host, Alex Jones. And for the balance of the hour, Wayne Madsen, InfoWars.com, investigative journalist. He also has his own award-winning website, WayneMadsenReport.com. He's also a best-selling author, formerly in anti-submarine warfare, then in security, uh, actually internal security, not like security guard, but actually headed up a division looking for leaks and moles and spies uh, in the NSA uh, in a senior position there, uh, directing projects. Uh, and then now for the last 20 plus years, a major whistleblower, bigger than Snowden. It's just back then they didn't arrest whistleblowers. He's been to Congress, testified, and then became a journalist. That's, that's what you do. Nowadays, you expose pedophilia in government, they arrest you. Or you expose drug dealing in government, they kill you. Or you expose Fast and Furious, like uh, the Border Patrol agent, and they kill you. And we've now had the investigators on. They killed Brian Terry to do that. So that's why this is so important. I was having Madsen on 18 years ago. And I was having James Bamford, former producer of Nightline, but also talking to whistleblowers on uh, with his uh, Body of Secrets and other books he wrote. So we've, we've known what's going on for a long time. Now the FBI has come out and says, look, you know, we want national security. We, we, we don't want you to know what biometric database we have. Well, I can tell you because the corporations always admit it when they start doing it. More than 18, 19 years ago, when I was really getting informed on all this, they were having big consortium meetings in Chicago, New York, and other places. And I read the articles on air from trade publications that listeners would send me, engineers and people that were there. So it's not in the news, but it's in trade publications. And they said, you know, every, all the phones will have a chip in them to track their location. You'll be able to dial in and listen to it even when it's off. This was all by law in 96 that it be in place by 2000. And they said... Tanning salons, uh, grocery stores, uh, libraries. We're going to have corporations push and subsidize thumbprints or handprints and driver's license facilities. And we're going to take all those databases and put them into a global database, not just an FBI database. Just like I first told folks 20 years ago, because a nurse gave me the documents from a military base in San Antonio, the U.S. Army runs a worldwide U.N. database of everybody's DNA and blood at birth. When they take the baby's blood and say, we're sending this off to the health department, they're not testing for a blood disease. <laughs> I remember with my kids, I said, you're not going to do that. we got to sign a waiver form. And I, don't you want your kids blood tested? And I said, yeah. Pull up the charge on the computer and you do that blood test here. And I went, you know, full well that goes to the health department. You're mandated. And they said, yeah, you're right. Whatever. And I went further. I said, I'm not filling your forms out either. You're not taking the blood and you're not sending it to the Army. And people started suing in Austin and Minnesota, and they were in the news, you know, saying, yeah, Alex Jones talked about it, it's true, and they found out it was a big nationwide scandal. And I'm not bragging, oh, look, we broke that. The point is, this stuff's all hiding in plain view because people like Wayne Madsen and that Army nurse and others. And then they take your blood and they patent it, and then when you need a gene therapy, this is now happening 30 years later, CBS News headline, biotech patents your blood and DNA at birth charges you in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars for a genetic therapy because they say they own you because they got your blood at birth vampires in spirit not in reality <sighs> we're going to get into all this today uh i want to get into the jihad going on the alliance with the elites and islam is this a triple cross i know cheney wanted to clash with civilizations stir up the muslims put the radicals in charge so we'd have an excuse to go in and murder them i'm against that i was against the wars but now we're going into another phase. We bring 5 million into Europe. The numbers are much higher here in the U.S. than they say. It's thousands in Austin admitted alone. But I'm told it's hundreds, Texas total. What's behind the Pope saying we don't need Europe's Christian roots and he abhors it? Let me give you the exact quote. Then I'm going to my guess. Likens this to ISIS. Dreaded, I'm sorry, not abhors. Dreaded the Christian roots of Europe. And it's colonialist overtones and, and likened, it says ISIS went forth just as Christ told his disciples to go forth. ISIS goes forth and murders everyone. So now I'm meeting with the grand imam as the Islamic State says attack Europe, attack the U.S. I mean, what is going on here? <laughs> but then the good news, what he's really an expert on, an expert on pretty much everything, Wayne's a really smart guy. And I'm not kissing his butt, but a few guests we get on I know are so smart because I do a lot of research and know even more than I do in many cases. But I'm telling you, listen to this guy. Everybody's getting mad at Soros. Hungary's prime minister. 
uh, uh, deputy prime minister or, or leader in Poland, and this is left conservative nationalists, they're all going, stop it. And, and then Wayne Madsen has his latest report out, CIA document, Soros connected to terrorist bombing in the 80s. CIA links top Hillary donor George Soros to terrorist bombing. So it all interconnects with the literal leader of Spectre. See, Ian Fleming copies reality. It, it, it's not, it, it's not, Life imitating art, it's art imitating life. And joining us is Wayne Madsen. He'll be with us at the RNC. The DNC's going to blow up even bigger. Sanders is winning. They're trying to steal it from him. I want to send Madsen there. I may not go, but I want to send a, a good crew uh, to, the, to, the, to the DNC as well. Uh, Wayne Madsen, that's kind of my five-minute setup here of some of the pieces out there. I know you've always got a lot of other stuff on the, on the burner as well that you'll reveal here today. Uh, irons in the fire you've got. Uh, but uh, what do you want to cover first that I threw out there? Well, I think uh, the Soros um, story is interesting because, once again, we've had another uh, one of these very close elections, this one for the president of Austria. And I've always uh, referred to these close elections as the Soros flip because it doesn't matter whether it's a left-wing populist that's defeated or, in the case of Austria, it was a right-wing uh, populist who was defeated. These, uh, in, in the case of the Argentine election, it was a, a global banker, a uh, globalist banker named Macri defeated uh, the, the left-wing populist, a uh, very close election. And here we have in Austria, uh, the, the election was declared to the Green Party candidate who was behind in the polls for the last several weeks significantly, and he comes ahead and defeats the Austria Freedom Party uh, candidate who was against the open borders, allowing all the migrants in. He yeah, was so they stole it. I mean, the guy's way ahead in the polls, they so he loses. It. How are they going to get away with flooding him with Muslims? They're just going to start robbing the elections. Yeah, and they stole it with with uh, postal ballots, and that's how it's done. Um, you know, the all the regular votes are counted, and then they throw in the quote-unquote absentee ballots, and that's where the ballot boxes get stuffed. And, uh, and these close elections... They should not really be that close, but they give it the Soros and his gangs uh, of election election engineers uh, want to make it look close to make it appear that it was a it was a free and fair election. But it was always so close. Uh, the Soros guy always manages to pull it out, whether that whether that's mockery in Argentina or. Uh, this guy, Van de Bellen. Sure, and that gets more political contributions to get dumped in as well to the political class uh, yeah. as long as it's a neck-and-neck -neck situation. Absolutely. So, and, you know, people say, well, what about the U.S. elections? They were close in 2000 to 2004. People forget George Soros was one of the initial investors in George W. Bush's Arbusto Oil Company. And uh, so, uh, you know, although he gave money to the Democrats, Soros does quite well. Just with like the Koch like, brothers used to be the main financiers of the Clintons. Absolutely. So, you know, the Soros has enough money, he can throw it around everywhere. But the net result is these elections are engineered uh, for his uh, people to get in. Now, in 1987, uh, I have the CIA document that's saying, hey, how come there's these bombings going on in, in what was then Czechoslovakia? Well, Soros are already shorted the American dollar uh, after Black Monday, that was the crash of Wall Street in, 80, in October 87, Soros starts, uh, he makes money on shorting the U.S. dollar. And he throws all the profits, a lot of them, into Eastern Europe, which is starting to open up in the end, at the end of the 80s. And he's supporting his favorite people in Eastern Europe. Uh, so we have uh, in, in, in the CIA, in, in one case, uh, there was a bombing of the Czechoslov. Czechoslovak Communist Party headquarters in a, in a Czechoslovak city, and they said, oh, look, it, it, it's possible that this money is coming from overseas, from abroad. And it was because the, the, the only person pumping money into the, the uh, Czech, Czechoslovak opposition in those days was George Soros and his friends uh, with the National Endowment for Democracy which is a CIA-linked operation. So I, I defer to the CIA. They knew where the money was coming from. Some of it was theirs, and some of it was Soros's. So, Who would uh, you say really runs the CIA? I mean, I know it's a bunch of different uh, factions in people, but, man, it always seems to be right at the tip of the spear just trying to 
screw over America, but every other country. It's like it's against nationalism. It's against independence. It's against families. It's yeah. like cancer. Well, I'm glad you asked that because I'm in the process of working on my forthcoming book, which is a glossary of all the CIA front companies, proprietaries, contractors, uh, partners since its inception. And it's becoming quite clear to me that when you look at how many operations the CIA has run and how integrated they were with Wall Street. It's really an attempt to take over the whole economy and have a shadow economy. Yeah, I think I think the uh, actual masters for the CIA, it, it's not the White House or the National Security Council. It's Wall Street. It's the Council on Foreign Relations. It's it's That's right. their, their leadership is based in New York City more than it is in Washington, D.C. And, and it was put in by the Royal Institute of International Affairs, not as a British satellite, but using the British Empire model of shadow governance. Right. And then you see how the CIA has infiltrated banks over the years and media companies and uh, trade unions. It was all done uh, via Wall Street operations. So the, the true masters of the CIA is, in fact, uh, is Wall Street. And it's been that way since 47. And you look at uh, Alan Dulles and the people who cre created the uh, uh, the CIA when they were with its predecessor, the OSS, they were all Wall Street people. And they're crony capitalist, consolidating the economy, as John D. Rockefeller said, competition is a sin. You having your own life is a sin. Investigative journalist Wayne Madsen joins us. His latest article, CIA document leaks and links George Soros to bombing in Europe. What is it this guy linked to? But before I go any further with him, I want to get into the election. I want to cover a lot of news. I want to take your calls, your questions for Wayne Madsen on geopolitics, on the Middle East, on Trump. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. I want to give first-time callers in this hour a chance. Please be first-time callers. 800-259-9231. Wayne, in the short segment, let me ask you about this. I really want your insight on this. It seems very reckless of the establishment to best numbers we've got. It's about 5 million refugees that they advertised, that the head of the UN program on refugees set up. I mean, he'd been the founder of the EU. Peter Sutherland, top globalist, moves down to be the head of the refugee program, advertises, sets up the conduit with Turkey, brings in all these mainly invaders that, as you know, came into Syria. You've been there. You've traveled there. You've been to Libya. You get your hands dirty. You get down in the muck. And, I mean, a good percentage of them are jihadis, obviously waiting for their orders to attack. How does the establishment get away with they're the ones that brought them in and then they allow this to happen? And why would they want to destabilize things that bad? I mean, I get they're bringing in terrorists, but why would they do it so nakedly? Why are they doing it here? Why is Obama hiding the real number of refugees here? That's clear. Uh, what's the real end game? What's this alliance with Saudi Arabia and Wahhabist Islam? What, where do you think this goes? Well, the, the alliance with Wahhabism is really... least your skype broke up my friend start back over you said the alliance with wahhabi islam please continue this is important let's reconnect with wayne madsen his skype just uh, shut down uh, um we're gonna reconnect with him right now again this is paramount folks because they haven't brought five million people and that's the best numbers we've got it's about five million in the last three years it was Couple hundred thousand the first year, over a million the next, over a million the next, and then upwards of two million. I mean, uh, uh, over the next two years or more, I mean, it's probably more than five million. And they would always say, "We brought a hundred thousand, and we go true numbers this year in Germany, one million. It's like whoa. Sweden say we brought in a hundred thousand, the same script. It turned out to be like you know five hundred thousand. France would be like, oh, we brought in a hundred thousand. It turned out to be over a million. And I mean, it is big. And man, these folks are wound up. They feel like they run things. They're getting aggressive. And then they're blocking nationalist elections that would just control their borders. And the EU saying quarter million 
euro fines if you don't take whoever they say and they're not vetting them, they're letting them in with TB. I covered that last hour in the news, mainstream news. They have TB. They test them and then bring them in and put them on the street. I mean, this is like military sabotage of America. Wayne, your Skype broke up. Please continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little NSA man in the middle operation yeah. going on there. But uh, I, it's clear that the Wahhabist Alliance has been a problematic one for the United States over the years. And and, and the, these uh, people are exporters of jihadism. Now, I've been to Iran, and the Shias are much more moderate uh, and much more accepting of other uh, Islamic sects and other religions than are the Wahhabists. Uh, there are people in Tehran who practice uh, Christianity. And Judaism. And Zoroastrianism. And, and there's no problem. But you can't do that in Saudi Arabia. So... I don't understand what Obama's deal is with people like uh, the, the Saudi royal family and and people and, and Sunni neo Ottomanists like um, uh, Erdogan of Turkey. It makes no sense unless unless when Obama, as a young boy, did pray to Mecca in the Sunni madrasa in Jakarta, which I stood in and uh, saw where he faced Mecca with the other students. And, and maybe John Brennan, his CIA director, really did convert to Wahhabism. Maybe that explains why we have this policy, because nothing else makes sense. Supporting these jihadists in Syria with weapons and sending the CENTCOM commander over to Syria to talk to these, these characters, when in fact the Russians have been pleading with us to help them bomb the people. But they say, let's jointly do air attacks on them. And the U.S. says, oh, no, no, we can't do that. We'll be bombing our own people. Uh, they, 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 we just had the head of one of these jihadist groups in Syria visit Washington, D.C. Stay there, uh, stay there, Wayne. Come back, you'll have the floor. This is important. Russia isn't perfect, folks, but it won't join the globalists in suiciding its people. I mean, that's what it comes down to. The, the globalists are suiciding civilization. I want to ask Wayne Madsen from his, his historical research. It seems like there really is some, some, something out to get Christians. Not only the big establishment mega churches in their fantasy land, government run 501c3, but I mean, all over the world, just nonviolent, all over the world Christians, groups just sitting there and they just get exterminated. No matter where they are, the UN, our government seems to side against them. The Pope is like the anti Christian. There's a word for that. It's called anti Christ. When you're anti Christian, Christian Christ, anti Christ. I say he's an antichrist spirit. I mean, even if you're an atheist, he is his his bent is anti-Christian now. <sighs> We're gonna go there in just a moment with Wayne Madsen at WayneMadsenReport.com. Writes for Infowars.com. Proud to have him. Before I go any further, we sell nutraceuticals like DNA Force and X2 and our new vitamin mineral fusion amino acid powder that really is, from our research, the best. High quality, you know, organic, concentrated, fruit punch flavored uh, way to actually absorb a multivitamin mineral system. That's available at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com is the subsection. You should really try it. You should give it to your children. Um, if you don't take X2, most people are iodine deficient. It's just not in the soil. It's not in the food anymore. It's, it's, or it's tainted in the ocean. It's not pure. You can't absorb it as well. Just like there's vitamin B12 absorption problems. That's even in... The New York Times now, that you know, headline, gut flora not allowing the absorption of vitamin B12 linked to massive IQ reduction, linked to Alzheimer's, linked to depression, linked to schizophrenia. Because of what's going on in our guts with all the pesticides and Roundup, it just, it's not absorbing it. You've got to go meth, methylcobalamin and things under the tongue. Or you got to do it liquid so there's more of an absorption to maximize your absorption. So our food's so dead. McDonald's hamburgers don't rot, folks. Under a petri dish, but but other food does. Other hamburgers do. I mean, that's just an example of how dead the food is. We've been eating for a while. Survival Shield X2 is such a game changer that we're offering twenty percent off until the end of the month or while supplies last. And it looks like more is not coming in to the middle of next month. And at current sales rates with this special, it'll probably sell out by the weekend. And I don't want to sell out. I'm going to keep some back at the regular price and hope that lasts. You know, into next month. But I want to introduce you to it. So at 20% off, it's an amazing deal at $23. And I'm talking a couple drops in water, a couple drops under the tongue. 
This is pure iodine. It's not garbage bound to a bunch of stuff so it doesn't you know, taste like rocket fuel in your mouth. People are like, put iodine in your mouth? No, don't look at the stuff at the, the Walgreens and eat it, okay? Leave a hole in your stomach. This is the real, you know, high-quality, vetted stuff. Because halogen is powerful. This is the good halogen. This isn't a game. This is like, you know, in the same family, but, but the good one of fluoride. And then it blocks the fluoride, the other bad halogens. It goes into your glands. They get happy. They get full of it instead of sucking in the bad stuff that they will suck in if they can't get iodine. So it's made me lose so much weight. I've been so much healthier. Libido, energy, my skin. I remember a group three years ago when we had the prototype. He goes, watch, your skin's going to get healthier. You're going to tan better. You're going to be, and it was just like, whoa. Hair grows better. Fingernails. It's just amazing. Infowarslife.com. Check it out for yourself. Experience it. Read the five-star reviews. Infowarslife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. -er. Brain Force is excellent as well. 10% off on anybody that signs up for auto ship at Infowarsstore.com. And you get free shipping on orders of $50 or more, so take advantage of that. And finally, we're going to send out on the Infowars newsletter... One more time, the promo code today. If you haven't gone and signed up for the free newsletter, that we send you videos, exclusive articles. With all the censorship going on, we need email. Because even if they do the internet kill switch during crises, we'll still be able to send emails out, our experts believe. So we need to have contact with you, obviously, to spread the word, for marketing purposes, for, you know, find the operation, everything. It's important. Something I never really pushed. Uh, a lot of folks are signing up. 50% off on the Hillary for President t-shirt and the Come and Take It t-shirts. And at nine ninety five, you cannot beat that deal. It's basically a lost leader, but I just want to spread the word about Hillary for president, and it's it's so exciting. So we're doing that four point star reviews. Infowars store dot com is the umbrella site. Infowarslife.com dot com is the sub site. Also, when you're out there, go to WayneMadisonReport dot com and read his books. Get uh, read his ebooks. They're they're really it's 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 excellent material. And support our local AM and FM affiliates. Become sponsors. Support the sponsors. Send the station 100 bucks. spread the word, put a billboard up on the side of your barn. You know, if people with money or a little bit of means don't take action and get in the game and see yourself as a warrior for liberty, we're going to lose. But we're at a tipping point. There's huge global populism awakening. They call it racism. They call it hateful. They call it, you know, nationalism, evil. That, that's just pure bull. Or it's an attempt to skew it and actually turn it into that so that folks that aren't, quote, quote white or whatever or, or from the West won't want free market. It's, it's, it's really a masterly branding job. I want to go to calls, but I want to give Wayne you know, the floor here for about five, six, seven minutes to get back into this jihad, this Wahhabist-funded situation, where you think it's going. You masterfully laid out the infiltration, their funding of our leaders, that they may be converting to it. They may have, looked. this is a billion and a half people. It's taking over Islam. It's the dominant form of Islam. Let's just double cross. If we want to be authoritarian. The globalists want that. Why not just go with Islam? Because there's kind of competing socialism, communism, authoritarian, kind of fascist models, but... It seems like the left's one of the dominant groups of control, authoritarian left. Seems like it really, like there's a courtship process. It looks like they might have gotten married. They might be having babies. You know, they, I mean, they might be shacked up here. Uh, there might be wedding bells here. Maybe they already happened. Wayne Madsen. Well, what's really troubling about this visit of this Mr. Al Nahas of, a, of the uh, group uh, Arar al Sham in Syria. Now, they're allied with Al Qaeda, and he was just. Uh, allowed into the United States. It, uh, he visited Washington uh, to have talks. Uh, I can remember when we banned Cat Stevens, who became a Muslim, from entering the United States. But I guess it's okay if you're a terrorist, you can come here now. But uh, this uh, Nahas uh, and his group had just massacred 19 Alawites in Syria, and that's the same religious group that the Assad family uh, are members of, and they're uh, linked to uh, uh, to uh, Shia Islam, the, the governing religion of the uh, predominant religion in Iran. Uh, so uh, why are we uh, having uh, al-Qaeda affiliate leaders uh, visit Washington? Uh, at the same time, Obama says he's going to veto uh, this bill in Congress to open up the 28 pages about Saudi support for the 9-11 attacks. Uh, it, it passed unanimously in the Senate, and Obama says he's going to veto it. Well, why? Because if you read that report, you're going to realize not only were there high-ranking Saudis involved in uh, financing the 9-11 attack, but that some of these people have very strong ties uh, to some of our top political leaders. Let me uh, just be clear to interrupt for just a moment. Pope Francis met with the top Sunni imam in the world, they're saying, 
That is Muslim Brotherhood head guy. Absolutely, it's you know confirmed that these people overthrew the Egyptian government. You name it, and 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 the Pope is meeting with him. I mean, the headline could be Pope meets with the head of Al Qaeda. I mean, is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, you can look at Egypt and uh, the, the, the get, we, it, get, it gets back to Soros, of course. Soros helped to fund the Arab Spring that brought down the Mubarak government, and then we got the Muslim Brotherhood, and now there's a uh, general in charge. Uh, and, uh, you know, when Obama said he was going to out make this outreach to the Islamic world, he actually should have been truthful and said, I'm going to destabilize the Islamic world, and that's exactly what he and Hillary Clinton... And then allow the total radicals to take control. Well, look, Hitler allied with the Sunnis. Um, the last time it happened before that, Napoleon did it in his last round, claimed he converted. Uh, so this, there's really a precedent for this, isn't there, in history, Wayne? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, I think the, the, the idea, too, is that not only a clash of civilizations is brought on, but what they're doing is actually, it's a, it's a strategy of tensions, and uh, what the, what's happening in Europe now is is just keeping the strategy of tensions going. With the, you know, I mean, you can't walk down the street. I, I apparently sh the Sharia law is now being imposed in certain parts of uh, uh, Germany, including areas close to the Ramstein U.S. air base. So this is actually happening. So so uh, let me just stop here. This is your I mean, your guy. I really trust a lot of other experts are saying this. You've never been some Islamophobe. You were against all these wars. You said it was to destabilize it. Now we see the double cross, though. It looks like they're actually going to wed Christendom with it under, you know, politically cor uh, correct control with Islam. And it looks like make that the new dominant overwrite of Europe and basically merge those two and take over the planet together. Or will there be another double cross against Islam after this? What's your gut tell you? Well, I mean, looking back at, you know, this book I'm writing about the CIA, the CIA has been involved in creating uh, 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 crazy religions and hybrids for years. Uh, the People's Temple in Jonestown was a CIA operation. The Moonies. Scientology, the Moonies, they were all CIA uh, uh, functions uh, to uh, create, uh, basically it's mind control operations. As MK Ultra never left us, it still is with us. It's gotten more nuanced. It's gotten more high tech, if you will. And, uh, and 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 so any kind of you know ecumen this ecumenicalism is fine. Uh, the Pope for the Pope to be meeting Muslim leaders and and uh, sure, but it's not about merging them and getting rid of our religion. Yeah, yeah. hybrid religions. Uh, uh, you mentioned the mega churches. That that's another uh, that's another scam. Uh, oh, those that, are admittedly CIA run. Absolutely, many of them uh, are very close to the CIA. Because oh, believe me, I know. Big bucks the. The family, the fellowship that Hillary's a member of. Hey, man, I've had them. I'm going to do a report on this. I've had, I've had one of the mega churches make a run at me. I mean, these people are hardcore. They're on power trips, too, man. I think because they got little CIA badges and stuff, they can do whatever they want. You know, yeah, you know, I mean, you got one down in Houston that's run by Joel Osteen. I mean, that, that guy's so, uh, his flock is so involved with the uh, elites of uh, Houston, it's not funny. And, uh, uh, but, the, yeah, the family, the fellowship is all about Christian capitalism. You know, make Jesus happy by making a billion dollars. And, by the way, give give 10% of that to the church. And by the way, be positive and God will give you everything you want. It's voodoo. They're teaching magic. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, again, this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is a problem. But the, 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 the CIA has been involved in this type of activities almost since its inception. Uh, some churches got wise to the fact that they were getting money from uh, these sources and and bolted, but you look at the early days, uh, the CIA tried to pump money into the Quakers, for example, because they had contacts overseas and they were involved in. Of the course, they're always. I mean, governments are always trying to take over religion, and we've got pretty much state-run religion to a great extent. That's why they push all this garbage in these liberal conservative churches. It doesn't matter the Catholic Church. Let me ask you, what do you think Pope Francis's real deal is? Because I mean, I think it's fair to say the guy's converting to Islam when he has the top Sunni imam, who's the religious leader that al-Qaeda bows to. I mean, the guy's even wearing the Santa Claus hat the whole nine yards, you know, like the, you know, the guy at the first World Trade Center. I mean, the blind sheik. These guys are out of control, uh, and the Pope is bad-mouthing Christianity meeting with them. Is it fair to say the Pope is converting to Islam or, or, or trying to marry it?
Well, he is the first Jesuit pope, and I know people, when they, you hear the word Jesuit, it's like saying Niagara Falls, they go nuts, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, he's, um, you know, he's obviously very much involved in this internationalism, and I think there's a, a problem with him saying, yeah, let's welcome all these migrants into Europe. Uh, uh, you know, does he not understand there is a price to be paid for this culturally? Uh, women can't walk down the streets in many uh, European cities and even small towns now without fear of being uh, uh, raped by these animals that came in from Syria and Afghanistan and, and elsewhere. Uh, where's the Pope on that issue? He's very silent. Of course, he says if a, a Western woman is raped uh, by one of these Muslim uh, uh, guys, uh, then, of course, uh, you know, she can't have an abortion, you know. So, I mean, he's, he's a, just a total hypocrite. And he's behind 200-foot walls. I've been there. They've got their smallest walls are like 38 feet. They've got 200-foot walls, the biggest walls I've ever seen. Yeah, and also the Vatican has one of the most effective intelligence services in the world. Maybe he should start reading Vatican intelligence reports on what's going on in some of his own. Well, the wall was built when Rome got invaded and taken over. And then all that stood was Vatican City. The wall was built to keep radical Muslims out. Right. And by radical it's, Muslims invading. Every 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 priest in Europe is potentially feeding intelligence into the Vatican intelligence service. And I'm sure there's reports coming from the same cities and towns in Germany and, and Italy and Spain and France and elsewhere where what what the net effect of uh, this mass invasion of these migrants. Uh, the problems that it's causing. He should read or at least ask uh, his own intelligence service what's going on in his own backyard in Europe before, uh, you know, making these comments about, yeah, we can take in more. By the way, he, there is no sunlight between him and George Soros on this. Soros says, oh, Europe should take a couple more million. They can handle it. Uh, they're all the same sheet of music. It's total unification of tyranny. I want to start going to some phone calls right now. Wayne Madsen is our guest. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. If you just tuned in, uh, we've got a lot of callers here. Carlos, Jeff, Bobby, Marshall, many others we're going to be uh, talking to here in this segment and, and the next uh, with Wayne Madsen. Let's go to Carlos uh, in California. Carlos, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead. Good morning, Alex. And uh, Wayne, uh, well, you know, uh, there's been a secret alliance between uh, the Wahhabis, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Western intelligence sources. As a matter of fact, Wahhabi who founded the Wahhabist uh, religion uh, was uh, mentored by British intelligence going back 200 years. And the Muslim Brotherhood, of course, when it was set up by the Saudi royal family, had secret connections with the British intelligence also. The madrasas where they thought Sharia law were being, were being financed by the Western... Absolutely, royal they royal were royal financed royal. to control all of Islam as it was right there at Mecca. And if British intelligence could take over that, they could take over the Middle East. And you got to hand it to them. The British were already taking over the Middle East 100 years before oil was found there. I want to go back to you, Carlos, but, boy, Carlos knows his stuff, Wayne. Yes, and, and it's a fact, too, that the a British Foreign Office colonel named T.E. Lawrence basically handed Arabia to the House of Saud. T.E. Lawrence, otherwise known, otherwise known as Lawrence of Arabia, was a pedophile, and he liked the fact that the Sauds believed in the uh, the tenant, uh, women are for making babies and boys are for sex. Uh, otherwise, if he didn't, if he wasn't a pedof pederast, as we know he was, uh, the Arabia today would be under the control of the Hashemites, not the Saudis, the same royal family that rules Jordan today. And they are very, very moderate people, uh, very moderate Sunnis. But no, that's the, the British absolutely. And the Muslim Brotherhood was backed as a counterweight to communist influence in Egypt, especially after uh, uh, Gamal Na Abdel Nasser took over power and threw out King Farouk. Carlos? Yes. Go ahead and well, push it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, well, you know, the, the, all these different fundamental, radical fundamental religions are deliberately set up by the Western, uh, the Western bankers and intelligence networks to, uh, to uh, of course, use the Hegelian dialectic and pit one group against the other in constant warfare. And what, what you see, and they plan so far ahead, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, like you said, was uh, 
things used to get communism, but they also were planning, of course, what they were going to do 40, 50 years later, use it as a terrorist organization so we could have our nice wars in the Middle East. Look at all the wars we have in the Middle East. I mean, it works. Carlos, you know, that's a great point. Carlos, tell us what you think. I'm going to ask Wayne. I totally agree with you. It's historic. It's fact. It's veritas. What's the next shoe to drop? What comes after this? What's the master plan? Where does this lead us? Well, I think that uh, the reason why the neoconservatives are siding with Hillary and dumping Trump is because she's going to be much more aggressive in expanding the wars in the Middle East than Trump will. So they're, they're putting their weight behind Hillary. And I think their, fi their final agenda is within the next four to five years, get us into a war with Russia, which will probably be the, the, the beginning of a third world war. And it's probably going to be to expand, of course, the wars in the Middle East, war profits and all this. But they want the ultimate chaos, a third world war, which will then lead to the to, to, to their long-awaited Messiah who's going to come and sit in Jerusalem, which we call the Antichrist. I, I truly believe that that's probably part of their agenda. But I agree with you. What's crazy is even if you're an atheist, the elite believe in a one-world government and a world leader and a one-world religion. It's like they're fulfilling it all. Like it's either it was predictive programming or it's real or they took it as a blueprint. Regardless, it's manifesting, kind of like... Jules Verne, 150 years ago, wrote about going to the moon, and now we've done it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just, you know, or spacecraft. It's like we envision it, it happens. It's amazing. Uh, great, great points, Carlos. Please call in more. It's always great to hear such an informed person. I want to go to uh, Jeff and uh, Marshall and Bobby and, 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 and Tom. But briefly, let me ask you this question, Wayne. What do you really think about Trump? Because, I, I mean, I guess he's got to meet with some of the top analysts, and then after he meets with Haas and stuff, they badmouth him, meets with Kissinger. I like his rhetoric. I know they're really scared of him. I know he says he doesn't want to have a bunch of wars, but Bush said he didn't want to be the world's cop, you know, in, in, in 1999, 2000. So, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I like Trump, but I'm still, you know, trusting but verifying. What does your gut tell you about Trump and your, your research? Who does he really represent or is it really just himself? Well, I, I, I was troubled as much as a lot of people by his meeting with Kissinger. Kissinger's a war criminal. Um, he should be in... He's been indicted, uh, or there's bench warrants out for him uh, in countless countries around the world. And, um, and you know, I don't know what Trump was thinking. He doesn't need Kissinger's vote. That's one vote up on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. What does he need his vote for? But he lost probably thousands, maybe tens of thousands of votes by meeting with Henry Kissinger. Because Henry Kissinger is, is a cancer. He's a top uh, globalist minion, but we know, though. I'm yeah. not saying he should have done it, but he, but by meeting with them, that might make the gangsters back off a little bit. Insulting him and not meeting with them, they might kill Trump. I mean, I think, I think Trump's balancing it. I'm not endorsing what he did, but I'm hoping that's why he's doing it. Well, I hope it's keep your enemies close, uh, <laughs> keep your friends close and your enemies closer exactly. in this case. <laughs> um, but it is a troubling sign. It is very troubling. Uh, and, and and the fact that. Uh, uh, he's been offered $100 million by Sheldon Adelson, the casino guy in Vegas. Uh, that's troubling as well. And and I saw recently that uh, Miss South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, has urged the Republican Party to support him. Now, there's no bigger neocons than, than Lindsey Graham and John McCain, and they all see— I agree with you, but they also yeah. see a bandwagon, and they, and they know it's going to be hard to stop. That's true. That's they want to jump on, like with Reagan, to be close to, you know, uh, sabotage. In McCain's case, I can see why he's facing a very uphill battle uh, for the primary uh, in Arizona. They may dump him uh, as the Republican. Absolutely. I hope so. Let's go to their call. We know if he wins, it's been fraud. They always cheat in, in Arizona, yeah. but he can't be the landslide, as you said. Uh, Marshall in Delaware, you're on the air with Wayne Manson. Go ahead. How you doing, Solid? Good, brother. Go ahead. Um, hey, I heard Joe on your show Friday. And I'm so glad that he's going to be coming up here to uh, Philadelphia about a half hour from my house for the DNC. And I think Joe's on to something where he says he's getting reports about there may be thousands of refugees in the Philadelphia area in the north, the northern neighborhoods. Um, just with the amount of violence going on in the schools lately, that seems to come out of nowhere. And also the cop slaying, which was taken over by the FBI. That tells sure, me. the guy ran up and said, I'll bar and shot the cop. Oh, oh they're definitely. Let me ask Wayne this question. That's a great point, Marshall. I'll come back to you. 
it, it was in the news that my alma mater has 232 in the last year refugees from Syria and Iraq, and they're all basically Wahhabist. Then we called around to other high schools. They've all got hundreds. Elementaries have hundreds. It's thousands and thousands of kids in Austin alone. Then in the news, they go, Texas has had 400 and something refugees the last year. But Homeland Security won't tell the governor the real number. I mean, I, clearly they're covering up the real numbers. Yeah, I mean, if they, I don't know how they're getting in, but uh, yeah, it's a federal operation. The federal government can withhold information. Um, uh, you know, and, and where, you know, where does it make sense for a lot of these people to go? It would be Detroit and Dearborn. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see what the true numbers are there because there already is a sizable Muslim population there. But there's a sizable number of Shias up there, too. And as I mentioned earlier, the Shias uh, have no time for the Sunnis. They look at the Sunni, especially the Wahhabis, uh, the Wahhabi Sunnis. Uh, and the Shias do not get along. The Shias are much more open and accepting of other religions, whereas the Wahhabists aren't. But even if they're Sunnis but not Wahhabists, they're subject to this overseas, Saudi-funded uh, madrasa uh, indoctrination, mosque indoctrination. <clears throat> It'd be interesting to see how much Saudi money goes to some of these um, uh, Islamic schools in this country and mosques in this country. We know they're offering to build them all over Europe and here. It's it, it, it's just it, crazy. It, it, Getting back it, to uh, uh, Marshall, uh, are you saying you think there might be terror attacks at the DNC? What are you saying, Marshall? I definitely think there will be attacks. Uh, the tri-state area here, Delaware, Jersey, Pennsylvania, if you look on the UN's own website, that Camden, New Jersey is a resettlement location. That's one of the most... Sure, well, ISIS areas. says they plan to hit um, the U.S. and Europe and I don't know how the politicians that brought all these people in are going to get away with it, but they already are. We'll be back in 70 seconds with Wayne Madsen. More of your calls. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you. For all right. I want to see if Wayne can stay like 10 minutes in the next segment because I want to get into other stuff, what he's researching, what he's hot on the trail of, not just my questions and your questions. But we'll get a few more of the calls in, too. Wayne Madsen and WayneMadsenReport.com. Alex, then Bobby, and Tom. We should be able to get, you know, to, get to all of you uh, in the time I have left. I'm covering a bunch of other news we haven't gotten to yet and some video clips. And special reports, and I have Leanne in studio too about the winner of this uh, Instagram contest. Alex in New York, thanks for calling. You're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Uh, hello, hey guys. So my question is a little bit different on uh, than what you guys were talking about. I, um, my mother is part of this political movement, and they're trying to overthrow uh, the current Armenian government. And I remember you had a guest who talked about how. The same forces that overthrew the Ukrainian government were trying to do to the other Russian-friendly uh, post-Soviet Federation. I met with the leader of the movement. I, I kept quiet, and the guy is uh, anti-male, very globalist, and uh, I played nice. So, you know, I'm just trying to find out more. I was wondering if Wayne knew more about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Poland says Soros is trying to overthrow them right now. I mean, these people are out of control. Uh, Wayne? Yes, the Armenia is definitely a uh, target for the uh, as a, a target of a themed revolution. We know that uh, Soros uh, bankrolls these along with USAID and the National Endowment for Democracy. Uh, the the current government of Armenia uh, is very friendly to Russia, and the, what the U.S. is trying to do is is march NATO all the way to where. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization will become the North Pacific Treaty Organization. Uh, they want to march NATO all the way east uh, into Siberia. And, of course, there's some countries in the way that are posing a problem. Macedonia was one. Uh, they staged a, an attempt to overthrow the democratically elected government there. They're doing it in Armenia, which has a democratically elected government. Uh, they uh, did it successfully in Moldova. Um, and uh, this is what's going on. And Hungary and Poland uh, have said that Soros is involved in operations there to destabilize their government. And Wayne, so, here's another key tidbit. Macedonia, yeah. like Turkey, is a key border where all these Muslims are coming across and getting through. So Soros and NATO are blowing open the gates to Europe, yeah. invading Europe, the opposite of what NATO is supposedly for. That's right. The destabilization of Macedonia basically helped open up the Greek Macedonian border to this influx of refugees. Now, Greece let them in because Greece has this so-called leftist government, Syriza. Uh, uh, Alex Tsipras is the prime minister. 
he said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to the EU, I'm opposed to the... No, he, he was a Trojan horse for Soros. He just uh, forced uh, the Greek population to undergo more uh, austerity measures. Uh, and yeah, their taxes tax are going tax. up record level, designed to bankrupt them. Uh, yeah, cu cutting services, cutting pensions. So uh, the, here was a case where there was a Soros Trojan horse introduced as the savior in Greece. Uh, the previous governments were Soros influenced. And the, the, so, see, this is how Soros operates. He operates on both sides. In Latin America, he, uh, he supports the, the fascists that have just taken over Brazil, for example, uh, which is now going to undergo drastic cuts in social services. Uh, that, that, and Argentina, both these countries will be pauper nations soon. Ho, oh, ho, oh, boy, I tell you, thank you, uh, Alex, for that great question. We're going to talk to Travis, Bobby, uh, Tom, and a few others. I'm going to ask Wayne first, though, what other big stories he's working on that we'll see at InfoWars.com in the days and weeks to come. Also at WayneMadsonReport.com. Again, they want to censor our websites in this show. It's so important you spread the word. This is a war. This is an info war, and you're on the front lines. People ask why all this is happening. A lot of it is the complexity of the world today. It allows corruption, manipulation, conspiracy to hide. But more and more, it's the unaccountability of multinational corporations that are monopolistic. Their main ideology is eugenics, control of populations. And they are socially engineering the public to be very servile, very stupid, very poor. Because these are very ruthless, greedy, hateful people, the opposite of altruistic. But they have this whole global fake, synthetic, liberal claim that they have the moral high ground and you've got to adopt their language and their systems. And then they will finance two or three different sides of a conflict, as Wayne Madsen was just exposing, investigative journalist, former of the National Security Agency. And they write books on it. Countless, Bazinga Brzezinski, Carol Quickly, many others, they write books explaining it that in some cases are a thousand pages or more long that are for the State Department and for the CIA. They think you're so dumb, they even allow it out in public. Because they're like, the public's not going to read this book, how we control them. You think Wayne and I just figured all this out? I mean, we've read their books, we've then studied it, we've been inside of it and out of it. In his case, I sit here and watch it. I mean, it's so clear. And the biggest con game is it's destabilizing the world, it's making things fall apart because that's how they get control. To the point they're having to build armored keeps and armored fortresses, redoubts, hideaways, with airfields, you know, 100 miles from anywhere. This is in the news. We told you about it first because we have the sources. Because I think everything may melt down. Wow, great job. Great job. I mean, as if these elites can screw everyone over and not have it come back on their kids. And I, I always read about these elites. Some in a redstone worth tens of billions of dollars. Total gangster, he's, you know, for months can't even talk. He's 92 years old. The underlings under him are reportedly taken over CBS, Viacom, biggest media company in the world. His daughter's in there. And, you know, Soros is almost there, too. It's like, you guys ought to be like LBJ, at least before he died, repented. And I know people that in his family that knew him. I mean, he was breaking down, crying, scared of God at the end. And just, he didn't want to people's. I'm not going to get into it, but I, obviously a lot of the Johnsons live here and their cousins and people and prominent business folks. And uh, he would come into their businesses and just absolutely break down crying. He, had full, he didn't run again. He had all the power, everything. He just finally woke up and said, what have I done? Not these people like Redstone and folks. I'm telling you, man, they need to repent. They need to stop what they're doing. Just because they can pull this wickedness off and confuse people. Does it mean that it's okay? But separate from them waking up, I want to ask Wayne about this and take a few more calls. We have to wake up, those of us that are smart enough to understand this and really rally and organize and not just hate the dumbed down public. And I know they're like piranhas and dangerous lemmings or a stampede of cows. I get it. But a lot of folks go, well, isn't it lucky for us the public's so dumb? And I'm like, no, it's not lucky for us. It's dangerous. And I'm not going to just get off on it and go, I know how it works. Other people don't. I'm all sardonic. I it's just, it's, it's because I got common sense, folks. I have empathy, which is a good instinct. I see a dog running by a car flopping around. You know, I feel for it. Well, I see it happening to humans. I feel more because I have empathy. And they've taught us in this modern world not having empathy is, is good in general, but have it only when the media says, flip a switch on, and then you can have empathy for whatever little special thing they're doing. We need to start having our own emotions and our own concerns that come from us. 
and come from our ancestors and come from our instincts and come from God and common sense. Wayne, I didn't mean to go off the deep end here. I want to go to some calls and let you get into other big topics you're working on. But how do we stop these people? I'm going to ask you that question. I mean, do you agree with what I said about them or what do you add? I mean, I just really don't like to see where the world's going. It's obviously going into total macabre where just like ISIS, the extremists just battle with each other to be more and more extreme until we end up with the, you know, doomsday, uh, you know, the character from Superman or something, just pure evil. Yeah, I wonder how many of these these upper echelon people even have uh, a conscience. Uh, you know, you see the decisions. Yeah, I, I, I also have read and heard about uh, LBJ toward the end, and you know, uh, uh, you know, he grew he grew a ponytail, and he he became basically one of the hippies he used to rail against when he was president, and they were outside protesting the war. So, uh, but but you know. <laughs> I don't think a lot of these people uh, really think too much about uh, the, the harm they've done. Uh, you know, people like Soros and Kissinger. I mean, Soros gives money to all these causes around the world that don't seem to do any good. They seem to cause more problems. Uh, so I don't know what kind of great benefactor he is. And he's thrown billions around uh, the planet. I mean, he, he bought Human Rights Watch basically uh, for 200 and, or $100 million. And... Uh, He's invested heavily in Amnesty International. Neither one of those two organizations are, are the same organizations that I worked with back in the 90s. They become uh, promoters of disruption, uh, promoters of color and themed revolutions uh, on behalf of the United States and the neocons. Uh, uh, and, and so I, I don't even pay any attention to Human Rights Watch or Amnesty International anymore because they're bought and paid for. Well... If somebody can send me the clip, I'd be very thankful. I've seen it many times on you know, the Internet. I've played it probably 50 times. And then suddenly, about six years ago, I went back to find the 1999 or 1998 60 Minutes interview with George Soros with uh, whoever the blonde lady was on there. Stahl, I think is her name. And you, Stahl. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just like folks, you didn't believe me, you can go look up on two different channels, NBC and CNN, Madeleine Albright got to ask, you know, 100,000 kids have died under your sanctions alone. Is that a good price to pay? She says, yeah, it's a good price to pay. I mean, she really said that. That clip's still on the Internet. We can find that and play it. But the clip on Soros, I have had my whole crew look for days in the aggregate. I mean, they've spent days looking for it overall. And, and, because, and, and, the, and back then we found it and didn't know how important it was. It got erased off some hard drive. But they would hit us with copyright. We'd put it up even 20 seconds. But he goes, she goes, do you feel bad about helping the Nazis round up your fellow Jews? And he goes, no, I don't feel bad at all. I did what I needed to survive. And it's like, oh, I ate my kids to survive, or I whatever. People go, well, he was, they would have killed him. What? What? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's like, it's okay. You know, the George Soros did. And now it, it's okay. He does this. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. And a lot of people um, aren't aware of his father. His father, uh, Tividar Soros, was the uh, promoter of Esperanto, this international language that was supposed to replace all of our other languages. Everybody would be able to communicate with. One another, you talk about a globalist project. Fortunately, one that seems to have failed, uh, uh, and I, I don't think they'll run with that anymore because basically the internet has taken over from that Esperanto project. I mean, you don't. And let's you, expand. That's key. These people yeah. have an instinct to dominate and control. They never get it fully in control because their own people are backstabbers. They will not get their new older project. People right. know about it now. It's going down. Do you agree with that, Wayne? Right. And, you know, Esperanto was this obviously this idea to have everyone speak the same language. It'd be easier to control everyone if you spoke a common language. But uh, uh, we don't need that now. Now they're trying to impose this on the Internet because you don't need to know one language. You've got these automatic translation systems that, that do that for you, basically. But they and, manipulate it. Yeah, they can manipulate the it. emojis. Absolutely. So, um uh, yeah, you you got to be constantly vigilant uh, against these people with this kind of money. And I I I only mentioned Soros. He's a he's a good case in point. But there are other look. The Koch brothers are no better with what they do uh, and uh, throwing their money around. I mean, they're they're talking about backing. Well, at least one of them's talking about backing Hillary Clinton against Trump because they. Yeah, don't that's like what the caller. I mean, the, the money's against him. The establishment's against him. These established people want to meet with Trump, try to compromise him. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm sure he knows that. But if I see him start moving towards their positions, then I'm going to have an issue. I don't care if he meets with him. He says he'll meet with Kim Jong-un. 
He says he'll meet with anybody. Yeah. So I, I think he's kind of clear on that. And I think because he's already said he'll meet with the Iranian leader or meet with whoever, I think that I actually get his point. But but we'll see. Well, I think I think it's a sign of leadership to be willing to meet with with anybody that uh, you, you need to meet with. Uh, so yeah, I, I I I take a wait and see approach as well on it. But uh, uh, Kissinger, I mean, really, I mean, there should be no reason why that guy should even still be alive, uh, let alone still. I mean, there's pictures of him hugging. Hillary Clinton. She loves the guy. I mean, what does she love about him? The fact that he uh, caused these coups, he's responsible for millions of deaths around the world. Maybe that's why she loves him. But uh, she has great respect for that man. I wonder I wonder if she has a similar respect for people like Pol Pot and Adolf Hitler. And uh, Oh, they love it. Joe Stalin. Let's go ahead and take a quick call here. I'm going to do one more segment and let you go. But I don't want to get to other topics you're covering. Travis in Tennessee, you're on the air. Your question for uh, Wayne. Hey, Alex and Wayne, uh, thank you guys for what you do. I pray for you guys. Uh, thank you. I, I wanted to say one thing about um, the mega churches, and then something about TSA is with the mega churches. You know, Alex, you call it Spidey sense. I call it the Holy Spirit. Uh, I've I've looked these guys in the eye, shaking their hands. Some of these leaders of these mega churches, and it's like a quickening almost. Like they sense that I sense they're evil, and uh, and you can tell they get very uncomfortable. Uh, I even had my wife like witness it. I was like, "Watch! I'll shake his hand. Watch how he reacts." You know, and and I can just see right. Well, yeah, because it's a special office when you're claiming you're a man of God and love people, and you're actually an operative. Uh, it's just they're so obvious. I mean, look at Glenn Beck. He is the biggest flaming Benedict Arnold I've ever seen. I'm skipping this network break. This is too important. Uh, Wayne, imagine your comments on that. No, I agree. I mean, you look at uh, John Hagee, for example. He's down in Texas. He's raking in a lot of money, a lot of it from uh, overseas, I might add. Uh, I, actually, I actually heard him and played it on air. He actually wrote in a book, he goes, Jesus was not the Messiah, but a rebel Jew who was dealt with wisely. That's the exact quote. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, uh, the, the only thing that separates John Hagee from a guy like Rush Limbaugh is the fact that uh, one has uh, some uh, license to, uh, as an ordained minister, uh, whereas uh, uh, Limbaugh doesn't. But, I mean, there's really no difference between these two guys. Well, I mean, the Pope may come out and say, Christ was not the Messiah, but a Jewish rebel who was dealt with wisely. That's an exact yeah. quote, by the way. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's no explanation for people like that. And Glenn, you know, Glenn Beck, he's um, obviously, he doesn't like Trump because, um, you know, his last candidate, uh, Romney, I mean, Glenn I was Beck's about to say, when you got enemies like Hillary Clinton and, and Glenn Beck, I got it before you. I mean, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, the reason he, he 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 still can't get over Mitt Romney's loss being a good Mormon, um, you know, Romney backed Ted Cruz and that didn't go anywhere. And Romney originally backed uh, Jeb Bush. That didn't go anywhere. So, hey, who do you think the Mormon hierarchy is allied with? Because the average Mormon I run is really smart, knows what's going on, hardworking folks, whatever. But it seems like the leadership of the Mormons all these different liberal senators and people in Orrin Hatch, that seems like they're, 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 I mean, what's going on there from your research? Well, it's a lead, it's another mega church. let's face it. I mean, the leadership, you know, a, a fish rots from the head. <laughs> so you look at the top uh, echelon of these these uh, mega churches, and that's what you get. Look, I mean, look, look at L. Ron Hubbard, the guy who started uh, Scientology. Look at this David Miscavige guy that took it over. These guys are all, these are guys, guys are all con men. Uh, I mean, uh, and uh, they're all out to make money. And, you know, as long as uh, there's fools like um, uh, uh, t Tom Cruise and, uh, and and John Travolta around to give these guys money, you know, they're going to they're going to be. Uh, How, how's that work? I mean, you, you, again, I've seen some connections to that. that the, the government wants to use cutout groups to test things. So they can burn them later if, if the operation goes bad. But it does seem that the, the power structures turn more against Scientology. Is that because they got too big for the britches or? No, oh, it was a case. I mean, the IRS was going after their uh, their status, but then uh, they reached an accommodation, and ever since then, uh, they're treated as a religion. Um, and 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 how did they go? How did they combat the IRS? They started sending infiltrators into the IRS. This is how they operated. They they basically took over the town of Clearwater, Florida. Oh yeah, infiltrators. Those are a lot of fun. Where they now have sixty seven buildings in the downtown area, and they're calling the shots. Uh, People try to stand up to them, uh, but that's a great test case, isn't it, for for uh, the CIA and how you take over a medium-sized urban area 
uh, by a group that comes in and just sets up oper an operation and expands it to basically take over the entire uh, city. And that's what they did with Clearwater. And they're yeah, still why do you think Germany banned them? Because it's got its own thing going. Yeah, the French and the Germans considered this uh, 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 cult uh, or, or mega church, whatever you want to call it, to be uh, very Nazi-like. And they, they banned them for a long time. But now the State Department says any country that goes after them is guilty of religious violations. Yeah. Well, uh, let me expand on that. I mean, without even just seeing, because I don't get into these infights with religious groups and mega churches, say mega churches. I'm telling you, a lot of the big mega churches in Texas and Austin, I've, I've been to them and, and investigated it. But I mean, they are, they are, they are cults, man. And they are doing stuff that they think, oh, it's a big Baptist church or it's a big evangelical, and they have no idea. I mean, of course, evangelicals I find are good people. I mean, I grew up like that Baptist evangelical, but this is this is this is weird, man. These yeah, places they, are creepy. Absolutely. And one of the things they try to do um, is the the family, the fellowship. They try to take over uh, existing churches and put their people in. First, they put them in on the church councils and get them in as elders. And oh, yeah. The, 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 the First Methodist here in town literally is yeah. a Bill and Melinda Gates, George Soros advertisement bureau. It actually says that. Right, right. And and so uh, that's that's what happens. Look, some of these mega churches, they're like businesses. They don't want their flock to go to Starbucks, so they opened up they open up their own coffee shops inside inside the churches. They'd rather wow. have the people buying their coffee there. They've got they got their own daycare centers for for you know they're earning a profit. So they're like little little compact cities, and then you just go to them and think you're saved from the rest of the collapsing world. They tell you just don't worry about the evil. Jesus is coming. You know yeah. he's going to teleport you up there, and Scotty's going to be up there, or, or whoever who's the guy that energizes on, on the in a little little you know beam you up. Up there to the right. Enterprise. I mean, who's the guy that runs the Energizer thing? Scotty runs well, the engines. Who runs the transporters? I think there was always different characters that ran the transporters. Well, exactly. But they're up there with St. Michael, and they just beam you up, and, and everything's fine. I, I want to take a few final calls to you, but Wayne, what else are you working on right now? Well, there's an interesting story coming out of Washington, one that I uh, reported many years ago. Uh, the uh, retired uh, former assistant inspector general for the Department of Defense a guy named John Crane has come out and said that uh, whistleblowers that came to him were punished because they brought uh, issues of fraud, waste, and abuse to his office, and that the NSA was one of the worst in punishing its whistleblowers. So what this says is that Ed Snowden, we had Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama both say, well, there were other avenues for Snowden to bring this to our attention. Uh, he said he tried, but now we got the uh, assistant IG at the Department of Defense saying, Look, we punished whistleblowers. I had these same whistleblowers come to me and say, uh, they said, we tried the IG and we were, our names were being turned into our bosses. We were being retaliated against. I know one uh, that uh, went sure, to the but quantify IG. that for folks that don't know. They say, oh, you're, you're a spy because you went public. Well, if you went to the government and they start persecuting you and, yeah. and, and then won't, and won't even investigate, you've got to go public. Right, right. And, and, and so this, this happened uh, in many, many cases. Uh, I know several people that went to the IG, <laughs> and they were um, they were basically turned in, like the Stasi. Um, and, uh, and 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 so in your day at the NSA, when you were there looking for leaks, that was your job. What would have happened if this kind of stuff was going on? I guess it would have been heard by Congress. It would have come out, or yeah, I mean, uh, back when I was there, there was a procedure. If somebody brought something uh, uh, to to the uh, IG. Uh, or the general counsel's office that would get passed on up the chain. There was no uh, retaliation. But one of the things that Obama has done, it, not only has he invoked the Espionage Act more than any other president combined, uh, but he's prosecuted people who were whistleblowers. He's, he's fired people. Uh, Tom Drake was another guy at NSA. Sure, do you think all these people that are going along with this and admitting they just follow orders to lie... Do they understand how dangerous this is for their own future in the country? I mean, it's just so weird that we used to have morals, at least to some extent. Now yeah. there's like, there, there's no bottom. There's no ceiling. It's just anything goes. I mean, what's coming next? Yeah, well, NSA became uh, its own Stasi. They had their own Q group, which uh, uh, goes after whistleblowers. So there was a lot of uh, uh, communication between the IG office and internal security at NSA. Now it's all coming out. Uh, from this fellow John Crane. Now it's being, he's he's retired. I understand, so uh, they can't do much to him now. 
Uh, but he had, it's interesting, he had to wait until he got retired to bring this information forward. Uh, look, he, it even involves the Senate. I know whistleblowers in NSA that also brought this stuff to the attention of Barbara Mikulski. Thank God uh, she's leaving. Um, this old battle axe has been there too long. Uh, but there were other uh, members of the Senate and House that would uh, basically turn in uh, congressional correspondence from people inside the government to their agencies. So th this is basically what this guy John Crane is talking about. Uh, and it, it got worse under Obama. There were, he, he violated the whist whistle. Uh, Blowers Protection Act. Uh, he never took it seriously. I mean, his, his, what he says and what he does are two different things. If you are in the government, you can see it uh, in a very stark fashion. Uh, how this guy, Obama, uh, he preaches this thing, but he, he doesn't practice what he preaches. But it's okay because he's liberal, so it's okay to persecute the press and, and, and destroy our basic freedoms. You can see why they put him in there to manipulate folks. Uh, let's Talk to Chris in Utah on KTKK, 6.30 a.m. Uh, you're on the air, Chris. Hey, guys. I'd like to talk about the prospects of Mr. Trump getting into the presidency. I don't look at him as a Ron Paul or as a threat to the establishment in any way, shape, or form because the media is giving him 24-7, 365 coverage, which suggests to me uh, that they do not look at him as a threat. Well, how could they not, though? It's kind of hard to ignore the nominee or the guy that's going to be the nominee when he says Bill Clinton, you know, needs to be investigated for rape. I mean, it's the incendiary stuff he says. He was already a superstar, but I get your point. Go ahead. Well, I think that's just a disguise. What I think they're going to do is they're going to allow him to get into office, and then they're going to sabotage the economy and not only blame it on him, per se, but to blame it on his entire movement. And I think that will step back the conservative slash Liberty okay, are you saying he's not conscious of that? Because you could be right, this is a giant foil that way. That's really sophisticated, though, and they don't like to gamble and do something like that. They like to control their person totally. I mean, is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, he could be very well completely oblivious. Well, listen, Wayne's, got, Wayne, Wayne's going. I'm going to come back and talk to you on the other side. Don't, don't, don't hang up. I'll take, I'll take the other calls, too. Stay there, Chris. Briefly, what do you think about what he just said, Wayne? Well, yeah, I think that's always, look, you know, they always say the office makes the man. The man doesn't make the office. We're talking about the presidency. And he could uh, get sworn in. And from day one, he could be uh, uh, like Jesse Ventura, what happened to him when he became governor. He's going to be meeting with people who are going to be giving him order, orders. And he's not going to be able to do anything else. Now, he can complain internally. But look, when, when presidents get out of line, this country has a way of taking them out of power. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Great job.